When it comes to Red Guardian, this is a card I actually do recommend. Initially, I wasn't so sold on it, but I do think this is a very powerful card that hits a lot of pretty key values and usually gets more than minus three in terms of removing an ability, which makes it pretty powerful on rate. It's a flexible card that you can put in multiple decks. It fully counters some meta archetypes, and the way that the card can be played it can become a big cube winner, an eight cube winner, because you can shut down people's core playstyles on the final turn, which I really like. So due to all those factors, I actually do recommend the card. I think the card is strong and it's something you probably want to have in your collection. Now, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the you new know, life update and then we'll go into the full review. Let's get started. -da 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 -da. Hello, everybody. How you doing? So I want to talk to you today first, just a little bit of what I've been up to. So I haven't really been posting uh, or streaming Marvel Snap too much. Just want to say, um, I have a good friend, Shady Bunny. We've been playing games together. He streams as well. Um, ever since, you know, TFT came out and their dual mode came out, always, we always talked about how we wanted to have a dual mode for Hearthstone. That was the game I used to play before I transitioned to Marvel Snap. And... Very recently, it did come out, and I've been trying to get to his time schedule. So he lives in Belgium, which is like seven hours time difference. So I've been adjusting my sleep schedule, trying to sleep well, where I wake up around midnight, which is when he usually streams. And we've been doing that. And just recently, duels did came out. So I've been playing with him during that time. It's been really fun. been streaming that. So if you have seen, hey, Collins is awake at 12 a.m. It's because I'm playing duos with my buddy. So that's what I've been up to. I do still play Snap. I always get that question. It's like, oh, are you playing Snap still? Yes, I still play Snap pretty decently. It's I just don't stream it or anything like that, but I do play like a, a decent amount of Snap, guys. So um, it's just I also have duels to add. So that's really what I've been doing, you know, recently fixing, trying to fix my sleep schedule to not be dead tired at midnight so just sleeping earlier um and it's been pretty fun so if you're interested in that you know feel free to say hello if not you know whatever no no harm to me but yeah we'll so in terms of the channel i am there are a couple of like uh videos that are kind of structured so those are a lot easier to make than videos where i have to kind of create the idea out of the ether so uh, card reviews, usually uh, spotlight guides, you know, if bundles were still around that, that I had data for, those type of videos, right? Those are the types of stuff I really like to do. So I'm going to consistently do that, but not really like daily videos or anything like that. Um, not really worth too much at the moment, but I do like still being part of the community, still like having an opinion, talking about the card games, talking about the new cards. Stuff like that, so I'll try to still release those in a structured way, but that's kind of what's been like attacking my time, you know. So just letting you guys know, we do have Red Guardian to review today. Probably going to have the short video in front of this, and then this in the middle, and then the actual full review a little bit later on. So that's what's been going on with me. I'm doing fine. I'm doing good, honestly. So, you know, don't... Nothing's, nothing's too bad, but yeah, just hope you guys are doing well. Take care of yourselves. Wishing you guys the best, and let's get into the video. This is a new show. Sorry, that's not the right one. So let's get into the real video. So we are talking about Red Guardian today. So this is a three energy, three power card on reveal. Afflict the lowest power enemy card here with minus two power and remove its text. Some things to note is if there is a tie, it will pick one at random. And it can also target cards without ability. So let's say you replay this, you bounce it or something, and you replay it. It will likely hit the same card that has already been afflicted and will hit it again, minus two again. So maybe they could have done something where you can't target minions that don't have ability power. So that would mean like, oh, good into Patriot. It's already good into Patriot because Patriot has very low attack. But it's still something to keep in mind in case you end up playing this twice or you play this into like um, double 
like with Wong or something. I do think that's probably strong though if you're able to like play this with Wong or play them to that Wong location, just hit two cards and turn both of them off. So maybe it, it is designed that way where you can't you can target the same card. But that is it. Pretty good synergies for Surfer. Surfer is a three cost, is a three cost. Cerebro three also really likes this. Sarah Control also really likes this. And this is a pretty good tech card for the meta, depending on how many early game cards you can use or big game swings for Red Guardian. So the card itself is pretty solid. You can kind of view it as a three five. Three five is, I would say, on rate for like good cards. Um, these days, kind of a power creep, but I think 3-5 is pretty good. And then you just have to weigh the ability. Is the ability worth, so kind of like, is the ability worth 3 power, right? Turning the lowest power enemy card, is that worth 3 power? Because I think 3-8 is a pretty good, like, baseline of, like, how to value it. And I would say that this is, in a lot of cases, if you can hit something meaningful way better than a 3-8, uh, like, way better than 3 power to turn the ability off, so this can be a really good tech tool for specific decks. And the nice thing about this card is that it targets cards that could not be targeted before. So cards, usually we have the Shang-Chi hit big card and then the Enchantress hit ongoings, right? But there wasn't really a way, there are some cards that don't have ongoing, but they act like ongoing. And there isn't a way to deal with that, like Andrew, stuff like that, um, Dracula, even Nova. Um, Nebula, Meek, Armor, Sunspot, Black Knight, X-23, there's a lot of collector, there's, there are a ton of cards that you couldn't target before that you can target now and is very meaningful. It is more than three power to turn those cards off. Turning a Sunspot off is way more than three power. Turning Nebula off a lot of times is more than three power. You know, so this just opens up answers to cards that couldn't be messed with before and they it now opens up this variable uh particular those are just the early game ones that if you play this on curve there are some late game cards to turn off they're pretty easy to target that also are pretty crazy so i would say iron man is the one the most like this thing you destroyed their deck game plan right if you turn off the iron man a lot of times that's like tribunal decks like you do auto win right like with that Dr dracula if you're if they're playing this card is also an insane hit um cerebro is also a pretty insane hit wong is also a pretty insane hit and these have low base stats so it's very likely you hit them super scroll could be super good uh depending sometimes super scroll like but if you're playing i mean you're probably not getting that like you're not giving them something crazy and then also something that's really nice is let's say your opponent's playing um a big on ongoing like a tier five ongoing like dark hawk in a solo lane because usually that wins this can be kind of like a shang chi in that you turn that off and this is this ends up being bigger right so uh you know dark hawk is a five four you play this right it becomes a five two and your red guardian is bigger for three mana so same thing with dino same thing with ronan ronan's not really played but those those two are other two are pretty common so you can deal with people playing their big stuff by themselves in one lane only weakness is if they do play something else in that lane then you target that that is if you don't have priority but you can kind of see the power of red guardian there are these cards that people do play into and rely on and turning them off can be very critical for swinging the course of a game so with all that being said Right when it comes to whether I recommend it, I overall, when I was doing the small lights, it wasn't really super high, but now I've seen it, the stats, what it does. I do recommend this card. So, some of the reasons is it's dependent on meta, but I think it's pretty good in the meta right now. There are a lot of targets for it, kind of listed a decent amount of them. There's more than that. There are a decent amount of targets, Hope Summers, right? Things like that. There's really good hits where it feels meaningful to play. And it can win lanes or games by itself. So what the, what what I mean is that you some decks are kind of comboy and they rely on these core cards. So like Tribunal deck, right? A discard deck with, with Dracula, Wong deck, um, Cerebro deck, Patriot deck, destroy deck. Sometimes you turn off their Deadpool, 
you turn off even x23 can be pretty meaningful or if they're setting up to do something like um a big uh, whatever right you know any any destroyed card you can turn that off right before it gets to go so these kind of things except you can just shut them down and the the core part or the the part that really i'll get into but the you can do this on the final turn, right? So let's say you're playing into a tribunal deck, right? They have the setup, they have their, uh, you know, Iron Man um, onslaught about to play tribunal. You can final turn Red Guardian their Iron Iron Man, right? And that that is insanely good. Like I love cards that can do that because those are where you get the big swings. Those are where you get the eight cubers. And this is a card where if you set up correctly or if you know what they're trying to do. You can shut them down on the final turn with a card like this, get eight cubes. So in my opinion, that's Shang-Chi S. Shang-Chi does that very well where if sometimes you have Shang-Chi, you shut them down the final turn, you get eight cubes. Same thing with Red Guardian. So really big plus for me for a card like this. So after thinking about it, it's got good stats, can win game. It's a good counter to some metas. The meta is good right now. And you can put this in multiple decks. So three costs, not not crazy like it's not a it's usually where the tech cards are so it's pretty flexible to play it in decks if you if you really need it for the meta so all that into i think is a card that you're going to you're going to want to have in case the meta is crazy or a deck comes out that's really good or really popular maybe uh, someone's popularized it you can just say hey red garden is good counter let's pop this in get some free wins so Overall, do like the card. I think it's pretty strong and pretty flexible. We're going to go through the spotlights and some of the lists themselves. Now, did I do a good job with the video? Let's see. So here we do have the spotlight. So I did change some of my ratings. This B tier was a C tier. The C tier was a D tier. I will say that the Red Guardian is probably not a D tier. So I will move that up. And then Lady Deathstrike got buffed, and I think the buff is meaningful. I'm seeing it in junk decks, essentially. So Lady Deathstrike is just being used to kill off your sentry, essentially your sentry bomb, if you don't have a Nihilus. So its stats are better, you can kill off your sentry bomb, as well as it just kills off low power things. Sometimes people you know, play their weak cards in that lane to kind of um, you know, block it. So Lady Deathstrike did get buffed. I did, do think it's better now. Maybe could like it's still like you know iffy, but it's playable now. So I w I will say like it, it's it's definitely better. And if you're missing high evil, like yeah, high evil is one of the best pickups. So definitely there's going to be a lot of new players trying high evil in the meta right now, and you know you might r be running into them. Uh, in terms of decks, Red Garden I think has a pretty large variety of decks to play. So we'll go over to some of them. This one's probably the most popular. Deck okay, it's too big, so let me let me lower that a little bit. So this is probably the most popular deck we do have. Uh, it's a pixie deck for some reason. Uh, pixie stats aren't super good; they're bad, honestly. Uh, but uh, this deck can make it work just because Sentry Anal is pretty good, and P Red Hulk is also like you know kind of broken. So you just have these strong cards, and you have a lot of early game that you can make cheap. And there is just a lot of like counter tools, right? You have the Mobius, so Mobius will fix it in case Pixie goes haywire. And then you have a lot of one cost cards that you can get for cheap. So if you have like a one cost dead strike that could really swing th things around, things like that. And then you just have the Red Guardian for tech in case you need it. So you're not running Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi is already pretty expensive, but Red Guardian kind of can fit into that tech, tech position while also being a little bit cheaper than, than Shang-Chi. So that's that's something you I see a lot this like if you're gonna be playing Red Guardian, I see this type of deck and it's been doing well, so that's nice worth. Uh next up we have is a Silver Surfer deck. I think Silver Surfer also makes a lot of sense for this, because it is a Silver Surfer card, three being a three cost, and it fits pretty cleanly into what Surfer wants to do. You just play your, your three costs until the late game, honestly. And then, you know, it's kind of kind of Sarah controlly. I mean, you do have a Shang-Chi to have a Red Guardian. So there is some tech here, but mostly it's just a Surfer deck. Uh, just using some of the core Surfer cards. Next up, we have... Uh, this is more Sarah control. I would say this is a pretty clear Sarah control here. 
where you've got the Enchanters, you've got the Shang-Chi, you've got the Red Guardian. Uh, there's no Sh Shadow King, which I would say is another pretty common term for Target. So, like, maybe you have Shadow King instead of Jeff. But I think here you're just doing that because you're running Elsa Bloodstone. So you want to have something you can move in case you don't have Kitty. So makes sense. And you have enough tech, right? Instead of Shadow King, you're running Red Guardian. You know, it's fine. And the rest are just, like, big power for the late game. No bass, but I think that's fine. You do have some... Cards that are bigger than three, and you don't really need it, so sure. Next up, we have a uh, Dark Hawk deck. So no Zabu. How how the mighty of like not, like Zabu used to be the quintessential Zabu deck. I mean, not Zabu. Dark Hawk used to be the quintessential Zabu deck. Now you have Rockslide on three, Dark Hawk on five. Like, where is the Zabu synergy? It's a little bit sad, but you are you do have Black Bolt now. So instead, you've got the one cost stature to the five cost dark hawk, or you can go one cost stature into the into you know your red guardian and your other things, or you could just go like red guardian rock slide turn six, which is pretty common. So that's, that's what you can do. You have the deck in with the silver samurai if you want to get that synergy going. So uh, and you also have silver samurai to activate the stature if you want to do that as well. So just kind of synergistic, and it's just a good tech card. So if you want to use that, that's something you can do. Next up, we do have another junk deck. This is a little bit more Daredevil-esque, right? You have Miss Marvel, so this is pretty pretty heavy in the control. You have Daredevil Professor X. You have the Cannonball follow-up there. You have the Annihilus Sentry Hood combo that you always have. And then for tech, you have Cosmo and Red Guardian and just generic generic value cards with guardian miss marvel nothing too special here just a good control deck if you want to use that and you want to run red guardian as well next up we have high evil let's say you got the new high evil card from the spotlight you want to play it out this is a very good deck to play with it uh red guardian just fits in it's nice because this is a flick the flick makes the abomination cheaper so that is some good synergy not super important honestly in my opinion but it is something to keep in mind that you can just uh, make their abomination one cost cheaper. So if you play on curve, you could go this on three, this on four. If you have no other afflicts completely, but you should you should have something. But that is something you can do. Uh, so yeah, just a general red. I mean, high evo deck that's also using the red guardian as well. And then finally, I assume this is the last one we have. It's Cerebro three. So. I do think Cerebro 3 actually got a decent amount of buffs with US Agent and Red Guardian. They're both like pretty powerful for them. US Agents, you can just kind of avoid the big cards, right? You know your, where you want to be playing these big cards. And then Red Guardian gives you more tech tools, right? Sometimes the issue with Cerebro is you have no tech. But here you have the Red Guardian. You do have Quake instead of um, Scarlet Witch, right? But that makes sense. Then you just have the generic other pieces. Nothing too surprising here. I will say, you know, once again, Iron Man, you can but then again they're they might they might just red guardian your cerebro. So maybe your Iron Man will be safe. But then again, maybe you don't drop both and you they just Iron Man whatever you play. So I will say like Red Guardian's pretty good into this deck, right? Like it, it can shut it down completely, so you gotta be careful. But yeah, if you do want to play Cerebro, that is something to do. You do have to be aware of like a red guardian is now like a counter to you there's a lot of counters already but it's fun and i mean there isn't that much there isn't that much uh, red guardian running around so uh, you might be safe there but overall that is the um, thoughts on red guardian let me know what you think and just you know hope you guys have a good day and we'll try to keep you know the videos at least in a decent schedule i know i'm haven't been like too consistent but i've just been busy so what are you gonna do but yeah take care of yourselves have a wonderful day i'll see you in the next one Can you get it calling the snap? once you watch him you won't go back he'll teach you to marvel snap your skills will be in